In this video, I'm going to show you how you can populate automatically your Mongo database with live real time blockchain events, whether it be NFT transfers, smart contract interactions, whatever you can think of, you can do it with Morales Stream. So I've set up a Morales Stream to look at the Polygon Mumbai testnet for any of these USDC ERC20 tokens being transferred. So anytime anyone transfers a US USDC token on the Polygon Mumbai test network, we get a live blockchain event and is added to our Mongo database. So let's go ahead and activate the stream. And as that's activated, like so, we can jump over to our Mongo database, jump over to MetaMask, where on my account two, I have some of these USDC tokens. Let's go ahead and send some to my account one, account one, 0x42. Let's send, for example, 3.3 USDC tokens to 0x42 from my account 0x5. Let's press next. We confirm this transaction, like so. And now we're sending USDC tokens. This is pending currently, but as this goes through, we should get live updates over into our Mongo database as we've set this up using Morale Streams, a Node.js backend, and a connection to our Mongo database. All right, so that went through, sending of USDC. Let's refresh our Mongo database. We might have got other transactions as well. Yeah, now we have 11. And as we go to the bottom over here, we see that the second latest transaction was from our account 1 0x5D to our account 1 0x4D for 3.3 USDC. And you, of course, see the original value as well with the six decimals that USDC token has. If we check it out, six, de six decimals over here. You can, of course, populate this with other data as well, transaction hashes, anything you think of. Stay stuck in, and I'll show you how you can do this and transfer your Web2 stack to Web3. Radio, let's dive straight into this one. If you've used MongoDB before, you've probably had your own cluster. But if you haven't, when you log into MongoDB, you can, you're prompted to create a cluster. You can start off with a free shared one to get you going. But before we have access to our cluster and our database, we have to give database access. Let's go ahead and create a new user. You can go ahead and give a username and password. We'll just use J Morales, for example. And as the password, we'll set Morales123. I'll just show the password to you, Morales123, because this is a tutorial, and I'll show you how where you need to use this password. But of course, keep your own one safe. Then we'll add a built-in role. Let's give access to read and write to any database, and we'll just make this temporary. So after six hours, this access will get lost, like so. And now with the user being set, we also have to set network access. So where in the world, which IP addresses have access to this database? We add IP addresses. You can add your own, or we can allow access from anywhere. We'll just do that. And again, we'll just make this temporary. So after six hours, when by the time this tutorial comes out, these accesses will be revoked. So let's confirm this. That's pending. And after that's done, like so, we can go ahead and jump into the database tab here in the left sidebar and connect to this cluster. Let's connect with our application. And here we have a MongoDB URI, which we'll copy. And now as we'll go over and create a Node.js Express app, which will allow a webhook endpoint for Morales to send webhooks to, we'll also connect to MongoDB and store these live blockchain live blockchain events Morales streams that sends us to our Mongo database. So let's go over to Visual Studio Code. I have an empty repo called Webhook over here. And let's go ahead and initialize a Node.js project over here, npm init-y. Let's create a index.js file, touch index.js. And then we'll also create a environment variables file, touch.env. And in this env file, let's go ahead and create a mongodb underscore uri, which will be equal to what we just copied to our clipboard from MongoDB over here. And of course, we have to set the password. So you remember we set it to Morales123, but set your own password over in here. And then we can jump over to the index.js file. And for this project, what dependencies we'll use, we'll use npm i express cores to allow cross origin requests, then .env to get access to our environment variables, and then mongoose will be our intermediary to Mongo database. Let's install those zero vulnerabilities. Awesome, awesome. Let's close our terminal for now. And before we create our express app here in the index.js file, let's create some utility functions, which will allow us to connect to Mongo database. So utils folder over here, let's create a function called connect to database, connect to db. Dot JS. So this function will use Mongoose to connect 
to our Mongo database cluster. So we have access to the database and then we'll also create another function. Let's create another function over here, which will be our transfer schema. So what we're going to do, as you saw in the intro, we're going to be looking at USDC tokens being transferred on the Polygon Mumbai testnet. So we have to set the schema so that we know what sort of data we store in the database tra transfer schema like so. So let's start with this connection to the database. Of course, we import mongoose and .env to have access to our Mongo database URI, and then mongoose will allow us to use mongoose functionality. Let's create that function, connect DB, which is an asynchronous function. And first we can use mongoose to check if there are any active connections like so. So if there are any connections, so the first element of the connections array is in ready state, we can return because now we don't have to reconnect to our Mongo database. But if this isn't the case, what we will go ahead and do is use mongoose to connect using our Mongo DB URI. Let's just set, say that we set the same name over here, Mongo DB URI, MongoDB URI, that's correct. And then we'll console log, we're connected to our Mongo database. And if there's an error, we'll just throw with that error. And then finally, what we'll do is we'll export this connect DB function like so, so we can access it in our Express app later on. Then for our transfer schema, again, let's go ahead and bring in Mongoose and then create a variable that will have the format, so a new Mongoose schema of what the data will look like that we store in our transfers collection over in Mongo database. So let's create an object, it'll be an object. And as you saw at the start, it will have a from address, a to address, the value and the value with decimals like so. So we have to give the from address, which will be a type of string, the to address, which will be a type of string, the value and the value with decimal, both type of string. And of course, all this data we will get from our Morales stream webhook which we'll see later. And then outside of this object, we can also indicate that we want timestamp. So anytime a new item is created or updated on Mongo database, we store the timestamp, timestamp true over here. And that is beautiful. Now, what we can do is we create a variable called transfers and we use Mongoose to check if we have any pre-existing schema in the database already. But if we don't, we use this schema that we just created over here as the schema for our transfers. And then let's go ahead and export this transfer schema so we can use that in our Express app as well when we store data into Mongo database. Like so, module exports, transfers, and save that. Now, with our utility functions dead ready, let's go ahead and jump into index.js, which will be, as I said, a simple Node.js Express app, which will have one post endpoint called webhook, which Morales streams can send live blockchain data to, and then we'll connect to the database use our schema to store new transfer objects into our database. So let's start off with a simple boilerplate for a Express app, pasting that over in here. So a very simple Express app, we're using port 3000, so localhost 3000, where we'll be able to access it. And it has one endpoint called webhook that we'll call with Morales to send our webhooks to. Then, of course, we'll also have to import the utility functions we just created. So bring in the transfer schema and the connection to database function over in here. And then we can start over here in our webhook. So when Morales sends us a stream in the request will have a body. So what we'll do is destructure that body of the request like so. And now let's go ahead and check out what this body of a Morales stream looks like. So open up Google Chrome. If we jump over to Morales streams documentation, the response body over here, and as we'll be looking at ERC 20 transfers, let's look at one example over here, ERC 20 transfers, we'll have a confirmed key, which is set to false if when the initial transaction happens. So when the transaction happens on the blockchain, no blocks will be behind it. So we won't know for sure that the block will, will be dropped. So only after a few blocks have passed, Morales streams will send you another webhook with confirmed true stating that that transaction is permanently on the blockchain. Now, for our case, we're going to go ahead and use confirmed false as this will give us real time. But in your production versions, you'll probably want to use only webhooks that have confirmed true. And then the important part is also this key called ERC20 transfers, which is an array with all the objects of transfers of ERC20 tokens you've set up the stream to listen to with this information. We have the from address, the to address, value, and value with decimals. This is the schema we set for Mongo database, but there's also other stuff like the transaction hash, the token name, token symbol that you could add to your Mongo database if you wanted to. Now, let's go ahead and use this information 
to go ahead and check first what the status of the confirmed key is. So here, like I said, if the webhook is confirmed, we're going to go ahead and just respond with a status of 200. So when it's false, we're going to go ahead and run the other logic. And the first thing we have to do to add stuff to our database is connect to our database. So over in here, we'll await the connection to our Mongo database. Then after that, let's go ahead and create an array for new transfers. So we'll look into the ERC20 transfers array and loop through it and get all the transfers, the from address to address value and value with decimals. So that loop will look like this, like so. So we take every transfer from the ERC20 transfers array and we push an object with the from address, the to address, the value and value with decimals. And these are what the Morales stream body sends us. So this follows the same format as our transfer schema from address to address value value with decimal. So we know we can push these objects into our transfer collection. So all of them will be stored in this array of new transfers. And we can use as long as this array has a length of greater than zero, the insert many functionality of mongoose to insert them into our database. Voila, like so. So we await using the transfer schema to insert many new transfers that we got from our Morales stream. And then in our in our terminal, we console log that new transfers were added to the database. And then we just return with a response of 200. So that is all you have to do to finish up your webhook. And now we're actually ready once we host this Express app to make requests to this post endpoint with Morales streams as long as we set it up. So let's go ahead and do that. Of course, you might want to host it on Heroku or your own servers, whatever. But we'll just go ahead and host it locally node index.js. We're listening to streams. And let's go ahead and create a new terminal where we're going to go ahead and create a tunnel using ngrok http 3000 is the port where it's running on. So this will create as a temporary URL where through the internet, we can access our localhost 3000 express server. So this is the endpoint we'll have to call with Morales streams. So let's go ahead and create that live blockchain listener with Morales. We of course have many tutorials on the YouTube channel of how to create streams and the use cases we will just create a very simple one here. So arrive at admin.morales.io, then go ahead over to streams, and we can create a new stream, you can use the SDK, which gives you a bit more flexibility. But for our cases, we can create from straight from the admin panel over here, we'll use a token to be transferred, let's go to account one, for example, over here, check out our assets, we have this token called USDC. Let's go ahead and check it out in the Explorer over here. So this is a token called mintable USDC on the Polygon Mumbai testnet. This is the contract address. We'll use that and we'll start listening to this token and any transfers of this token happening on the Polygon Mumbai testnet. So we'll keep it in demo mode before we want to push it to production. So for the webhook URL, what we're going to do is get this URL got from ngrok, paste that over in here, like so, and make sure to call the webhook endpoint, like so. Then you can give it a description tag to make it uniquely identifiable for you. This is good for us though. Then select any EVM networks that you want to listen to. But our token is on the Polygon Mumbai testnet. So we have to listen to the Polygon Mumbai testnet. And then contract interactions as we're listening to ERC20 transfers, we select that. We don't need to see any native transactions, internal transaction or contract logs, but Morales Streams allows you to do that. Then for more advanced options, you could create filters, only listen to tokens above a certain value to a certain account, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And then triggers as well. That is out of the scope of this video. But now you see over here in the test environment, we're already starting to get ERC 20 transfers, ERC 20 transfer over here, we see that a value of 10,000 USDC was just sent. But now as we go to production mode over here, click this toggle, we should start getting these streams live on our Express app, and that should start populating our Mongo database. Let's go ahead and trust this out. So go to production mode over here, check out Visual Studio Code, and our terminal over here. So now we're listening to streams. So once the first transfer of USDC tokens on the Polygon Mumbai testnet happens, we should get a prompt over here that says connected to Mongo database. So we're connected to Mongo database and some new transfers were added to the database. And we can go check that out. Check out our database over here, close that browse our collections, and there should now be a transfers collection with a new transfer in it transfers over here. And we have two transfers for, for very small amounts over here, 0 0.00398 from this address to this address. And same thing over here, 0 0.0002 USDC being transferred from this address to this address. How sweet is that? And now we can check this out 
actually by doing a transfer ourselves and see if it's populated over here. And just to make sure, we're constantly getting these new transfers being added to our database and we can follow it in our backend Express app over here. But now let's try this ourselves. Let's go over here. Our account one is Xerox 4D2. Let's take our USDC coins, send some over between my accounts, account two, Xerox 5DAD. Let's send some to account two. Let's send, for example, 14 USDC, press next and go ahead and confirm this transaction. And as this is going through, after it's true, we can refresh our Mongo database and this transfer should now be stored over here in our Mongo database. Let's go ahead and refresh. Go ahead and scroll to the bottom over here. We see that our value with decimal 14 USDC was just transferred. USDC, of course, has six decimals, so there's six zeros. And the two address is our account two, and the from address is our account one. So we're currently listening to live blockchain events using Morales streams over here. We have our stream created. It's constantly listening to the Polygon Mumbai testnet. You could start listening to other things like NFTs being transferred, minted, smart contract interactions, smart contract events. We just use a simple example over here. And then our Node.js backend is receiving all these live blockchain events, connecting to our Mongo database and storing all this data on Mongo database for us when we need it as we're building our apps. Hopefully this video was informative for you and you find a lot of use for it. I'll catch you in the next one.